Now that the secondary street proposed profile has been updated, I'd like to continue by modeling this western approach. Let me turn a layer on for a second. I'm going to open the layer control. I'll push this to the top and I'm going to turn on this geometry that represents the turn lane striping. This will give us a better idea of the intent of this design. For the corridor in this section, I'd like my crown to follow the alignment. This way my forward lanes through here are all going to taper to the outside and my reverse lanes will also taper to the outside. Let's build the assembly. I'm going to come up and open the assembly menu. I'll choose Create Assembly. I'm going to call this assembly Secondary Street Crown Normal. For the assembly type, I'll choose Undivided Crowned Road. I'll click OK, and then I'll click to place this on screen. Let's pan this up. Since my crown is following the alignment, it looks like we'll have three lanes here to the right side of the assembly and two lanes to the left side. Let's add the lanes. I'm going to select the assembly and I'll click the tool palette button. I'm going to be adding some Civil 3D lanes in this case because I used Civil 3D lanes on the other part of the corridor. To grab those I'm going to right click on the palette name and I'll come down and choose Civil Imperial Subassemblies. And then on the lanes tab I'll select Lane Super Elevation AOR. This is a general purpose Civil 3D lane. Let's click the assembly. We'll add our first lane. I'm going to have two on the left side so I'll place those. I'll come over and click the insertion marker and we'll put three here on the right side. Once my lanes are in, I'm going to select them and adjust their common properties. I'll select the lanes and then I'll come down to the properties palette. We'll adjust the pavement thicknesses first. Pavement 1 depth is going to be 0.125, pavement 2 depth 0.125, base depth 0.5, and sub base depth 0.333. Let's also adjust the potential pivot that represents these flags to the outside and inside. I'm not going to be using the additional pivot points with the super elevation, so I'll choose no in this case just to hide those from screen. I'll press escape. Next we'll take care of the lane slopes. Let me pan this up. I want my inside lanes to have a 2% slope and the outside to be 3%. So it looks like these two lanes to the right are going to be 2% and the outside lane in both cases is going to be 3%. So let me grab both of these. We'll go to the Properties palette and I will make these negative 3%. I'll press Escape when finished. Now we'll assign the appropriate super elevation properties. I'll select these two lanes. These will represent right lane inside. This outside on the right will represent a right lane outside. This first lane on the left is going to be left lane in the side and this one to the outside is going to be left lane outside. By assigning these properties now later on when I assign super elevation to this alignment these lanes will know which column to look at in the table to get their lane slope. Finally I'm going to give the lanes logical names. We'll start with this first one on the right side. This is going to represent a turn lane. I'll select this and I'll call this right turn lane inside. I'll press escape. We'll grab the next one. This is the through lane. We'll call this right lane number one. I'll press escape. I'll select this lane to the outside. This one's going to be right turn lane outside. Let's select this one to the inside. This one's going to be left lane number one. That's the through lane. And this last one is going to be left turn lane outside. These names will come in handy when we're assigning targets. Let's zoom out and take a look. Now that I have the assembly created, let's sweep this assembly along the alignment. I'm going to create a new corridor. I'll call this Secondary Street West Approach. I'm going to be building this from the Secondary Street alignment using the Secondary Street finished ground profile that we just edited a little bit ago. Let's go to the assembly. I'll choose Secondary Street Crown Normal. Not going to be targeting a surface. I am going to be setting the baseline and region parameters, so I'll leave this selected and I'll click OK. For my region, I'd like it to start at the beginning of the alignment and we'll click the End Station Select button. I'm going to pull this all the way down to the end of this farthest curb return. Let's go to frequency for a second. For offset target, I do not want the extra assembly insertions placed adjacent to my target start and end. If I want additional insertions, I'll place those myself. So I'm going to choose no, and then I'll come down and click OK. Let's click OK. We'll rebuild, and we'll take a look. 
this looks good a couple things I have to do I've got to add some curb and gutter to the outside I can see that I also need to take care of the targeting here for my outside lanes let's add the curb and gutter I'm gonna use type F we'll grab that from the Florida DOT palette I'll right click on the palette name I'll come down to F dot sub assemblies and then on the curb and gutter tab I'll select F dot type F curb we'll snap one of these to the outside left and right let's pan this up I will then select the corridor model and we'll rebuild that looks good let's take care of our targeting now for this outside left lane I want this to target this northwest return or I would like it to target the edge of traveled way left whichever alignment is farthest this way it will pull the lane into a zero width along here and then when this opens up the lane will follow the farther alignment we're gonna do that for both sides let me select the corridor I'm going to use a shortcut I'll click edit targets and then I'll click inside the region for the left turn lane outside I'm going to click to assign horizontal targets this is going to target the northwest return it will also target the secondary street edge of traveled way left whichever one is farthest let's click OK I'm going to come down to right turn lane outside this is going to target the southwest return it will also target secondary street edge of traveled way right whichever one is farthest let's click OK and OK I'll press escape we'll pan this down and take a look this is perfect until we get up to this area in fact it's perfect all the way up to the curb return here that being said the curb return here is not directly perpendicular to this other side so really my corridor on the left could stop right at the curb return I don't need these two lanes or the curb and gutter let's create a derivative of our assembly I'm going to launch the copy command I'll select the assembly object and press enter I'll click a point on screen we'll copy this straight up I'll press escape when finished I will then select the assembly and we'll give this one a new name we'll call this secondary street crown normal right side only since this is the right side only I don't need these lanes I'll just select them and delete let's update the corridor I'm going to pan this over and I'm going to try and use the shortcut tools to do this I'll start by selecting the corridor and then from the modify region panel I'll choose split corridor region I'll click inside the region I want to split and I'd like to split this at the end point of this curb return I'll press escape then I'll open the modify region panel and I'll choose region properties I'll click inside this new region from here I can select an assembly I'm going to choose secondary street crown normal right side only I'll click OK note that we can also adjust the targets from here let's verify those I'll click in the target field I'll grab the ellipsis button and then we'll take a look usually when you split a corridor the targets may shift you can see these are now on the right turn lane inside let's select the horizontal target field and I am going to remove these these are not necessary on this part I'll click OK let's go to right turn lane outside this is going to target the southwest return and it's going to target the secondary street edge of travel way on the right side whichever one is farthest I'll click OK let's click OK we'll take a look this is perfect at this point I have everything modeled all the way up to the curb returns eventually I'll be creating a corridor that sweeps around this bend and ties to my alignment and this edge I'll be doing the same thing on the other side in our next session, we'll model the secondary street eastern approach.